Today, we're rating which suit of armor is best. Across comics and video games, we'll be researching the most iconic armor to decide which has the best chance of keeping you alive. In this breakdown, we're ranking them by four criteria, their offensive and defensive powers, their reliability in combat, their production cost, and how likely it is that science could create them. Drop your favorite pick in the comments, and we'll see how it stacks up when science weighs in. And the first step on this journey takes us to the armor that demands nothing less than rewriting the human body itself. Halo's Mjolnir powered assault armor is perhaps the most ambitious depiction of battlefield technology ever conceived. The defining feature is its ability to extend the soldier's nervous system directly into the suit. In practice, this means that the instant a thought forms, the armor executes it. There's no lag between brain and body, no hesitation between decision and action. For a Spartan who has been genetically re-engineered and surgically enhanced, this feels like second nature. For anyone else, it would be catastrophic. Here's why. The human body has built-in limits. Our bones, muscles, and tendons are tuned to handle the force output of our natural physiology. Plugging into Mjolnir is like plugging a toaster into a nuclear reactor. The suit amplifies strength and reaction time so dramatically that an ordinary soldier's body would crumble under the strain. Imagine the disorientation of virtual reality motion sickness when your brain and body don't match up. Then magnify that mismatch until the outcome is snapped spines and shredded ligaments. Structurally, the armor blends ideas that almost sound feasible with technologies far beyond us. The titanium alloy plating recalls real military armor, while the hydrostatic gel beneath it echoes research into non-Newtonian fluids that stiffen on impact. But Mjolnir doesn't stop there. It houses a crystalline memory layer designed to run an onboard AI, essentially turning the suit into a wearable supercomputer. Current wearable processors are impressive, but nowhere near hosting an artificial intelligence with the complexity of Halo's Cortana. Then there are the energy shields, reverse engineered from alien technology. Lore describes them as able to absorb around 15 megajoules of energy. To put that in perspective, that's about the energy released in around 7 pounds of TNT. The power needed to sustain that defense is immense, around the energy output of a small power plant, far exceeding the energy density of any battery or portable generator humanity has ever created. Cost closes the book on feasibility. In lore, one Mjolnir suit is said to cost as much as a small starship. That estimate feels accurate when you factor in the exotic materials, power demands, and decades of research required to make it work. Even if it were technologically possible, no government could afford to produce them at scale. So where does this leave Mjolnir? In fiction, it is flawless. A perfect blend of human and machine, granting Spartans godlike abilities. In reality, it is a lethal mismatch of biology and technology, collapsing under cost and physics. For that reason, Halo's legendary Mjolnir armor lands in B-tier. Awe-inspiring, but impossible for us. Iron Man's suit is one of the most recognizable pieces of fictional technology ever created. It promises everything. Flight, weaponry, AI integration, environmental versatility, and even self-repair. On screen, it feels limitless. In practice, Science says it's impossible. Let's start with flight. Real jet propulsion requires engines that take in huge amounts of air, compress it, ignite fuel, and expel exhaust to generate thrust. Fighter jets, for example, burn thousands of liters of fuel per hour to achieve supersonic speeds. The idea that hand-sized thrusters on Iron Man's palms and boots could generate comparable thrust is absurd. The arc reactor powering the suit is supposed to be a compact, limitless energy source. In reality, the material composition raises more issues. The films often describe Stark's armor as gold titanium alloy. While titanium is strong and corrosion resistant, it's not heat proof enough to survive rocket exhaust inches away from the body. Carbon composites and ceramics can resist some heat, but they are brittle under stress. To build a suit that's simultaneously bulletproof, heat proof, and light enough for acrobatic flight, is beyond the ability of any known material. Then there's the nanotechnology. Later versions of the suit, like the Mark L, deploy as swarms of self-assembling particles capable of forming weapons on demand. Real nanotech today focuses on drug delivery systems, 
coatings and sensors, let alone under the chaos of combat. The speed, stability, and energy requirements are astronomical. Cooling is another overlooked issue. Even if the arc reactor were real, the amount of heat generated by flight and weapon systems could cook the operator alive. Jet exhaust burns at over 1600 degrees Celsius, and without large cooling systems, the pilot inside would overheat in seconds. Stark's suit doesn't have visible cooling radiators or liquid nitrogen systems, because they'd ruin the aesthetic. Space compounds the problem. The human-sized frame has finite volume. If you prioritize thick armor, you reduce internal space for weapons and power storage. If you prioritize flight systems, you compromise armor thickness. Real engineering is always a trade-off. Stark's armor sidesteps these trade-offs by ignoring them entirely. Still, within the Marvel Universe, the armor works. It adapts to any situation. The versatility makes it one of the most impressive fictional armors ever created. But when judged against physics, material science, and economics, it collapses. In lore, the cost is never clearly stated, but one can assume it would exceed billions. Exotic materials, impossible reactors, and nanotech systems make it prohibitively expensive. In terms of reliability, the armor is flawless in fiction, but in reality, it would be prone to catastrophic failure. Iron Man's armor is the ultimate fantasy of personal technology. It inspires engineers and storytellers alike, but inspiration is not feasibility. For that reason, Iron Man's armor, like Halo's Mjolnir, lands in the B tier. Iconic and unforgettable, but impossible in practice. Fallout's power armor is different from the rest. It was designed to turn soldiers into gods. It wasn't built with alien tech or divine rituals. It was created as a pragmatic solution to resource scarcity. It is, at its core, a wearable tank. The suit is an exoskeleton fitted with hydraulics, servos, and protective plating. A soldier steps inside and locks it into place. From there, the suit multiplies strength, allowing the operator to carry weapons too heavy for an unassisted human and withstand recoil that could otherwise shatter bones. This is the same principle behind modern exoskeleton prototypes. Companies like Sarcos Robotics and military programs have already built exosuits that allow workers to lift hundreds of pounds without strain. Their limitation is always power. Today's prototypes last a few hours, at most, tethered to lithium-ion batteries. Fallout solves this by imagining fusion cores that last a century. That part is pure fantasy, but everything else is grounded. The plating is thick enough to turn aside small arms fire and shrapnel. Advanced models like the T-51 or X-01 add radiation shielding, toxin filters, and even fluid recycling turning the suit into a long-term survival habitat. This makes it as much a life support system as a combat system. Unlike the biological requirements of Mjolnir, Fallout's power armor only requires training. Soldiers can learn to use it, much like piloting a vehicle. The design philosophy is practical. Militaries worldwide are researching powered exosuits to reduce soldier fatigue, carry heavy weapons, and provide enhanced protection. The plausibility is what sets Fallout's design apart. If you accept the fictional energy source, everything else feels like an extension of real-world engineering. It doesn't break physics. It bends it just enough to be believable. Because of that, Fallout's power armor earns the highest placement, S-tier. It is the closest design to reality, the one that feels like it could emerge within decades if energy storage breakthroughs are made. It lacks the spectacle of Iron Man armor, but its practicality makes it the strongest contender for real-world use while providing superhuman powers. When most people think of stormtroopers, the first thing that comes to mind isn't fear, it's those infamous missed shots. But take away the memes for a second, and the armor they wear deserves a closer look. Stormtrooper armor isn't built to turn its wearer into a super soldier like Mjolnir or a walking tank like Fallout's power armor. It's mass-produced battlefield gear designed to be practical for an empire that needs to outfit millions of soldiers across countless environments. Let's start with protection. Cannon says the armor is made from plastoid composites layered over a temperature-regulated body glove. Against blasters, it's not invincible, but that's by design. 
blaster bolts carry a massive amount of thermal energy. If the armor could truly deflect direct hits, which would mean every trooper walks around with a personal reactor strapped to their back. Instead, Stormtrooper armor disperses some of that energy, often preventing burns from becoming fatal. Against shrapnel, environmental hazards, and low-power weapons, it's far more effective. Reliability is where it shines. The armor is standardized and modular, meaning it can be mass-produced and easily repaired. This stuff is designed for logistics. It can be shipped by the thousands, reassembled with spare parts, and adjusted with specialized kits for snow, desert, or aquatic environments. Modern armies thrive on standardization. Just look at the AK-47 or M16. Stormtrooper armor follows the same philosophy. Cost is also a critical factor. In universe, the Empire's budget had to stretch across trillions of troopers. The design had to be cheap enough to mass produce without bankrupting the Imperial war machine. That makes Plastoid a smart choice. It's light, reasonably durable, and far cheaper than exotic alloys like titanium or adamantium. This is the first suit on our list that actually feels economically sensible. But compared to the energy-hungry designs we've looked at, Stormtrooper armor feels grounded. So while it won't make you superhuman or let you survive a direct tank blast, it will keep you alive in toxic atmospheres, protect against environmental extremes, and keep costs manageable across an empire. That practicality is exactly why it earns A tier. Stormtrooper armor isn't flashy, and it won't win a one-on-one -on -one fight with a Spartan. But as scalable, believable battlefield gear, it is one of the smartest designs on the list. In Warhammer 40k, Space Marines are the poster boys of Unstoppable Warriors, and their armor is almost as famous as the genetically enhanced soldiers themselves. Power armor isn't just protection. It's a sacred extension of the Marine's body. But once we strip away the myth and look at it through science and engineering, the cracks start to show. The secret to making it work in the lore is the black carapace. This surgically implanted organ bonds the Marine's nervous system directly to the armor. Without it, the suit is practically dead weight. With it, the armor responds to thought as if it were part of the body. That gives us the impression of a flawless human-machine hybrid. In reality, however, this is where things already collapse. Current brain-computer interfaces are nowhere near this level of control. At best, we can get patients to move a robotic arm or type slowly using electrodes. Scaling that up to synchronize a half-ton armored exoskeleton is beyond what today's neuroscience can even dream of. The armor itself is described as layers of ceramite, plasteel, and adamantium, materials meant to shrug off everything from bolter fire to plasma blasts. Servo-assisted hydraulics boost the wearer's already superhuman strength, letting Marines lift vehicles and wield enormous weapons. The helmet is equally advanced, with auto senses providing infrared and ultraviolet vision, auditory filters, and a battlefield HUD. Built-in life support systems can inject stimulants, recycle nutrients, and even let Marines operate in the vacuum of space. On paper, it's flawless. Armor, medical system, survival gear, and targeting suit all rolled into one. But the problems mount quickly. Let's start with energy. The backpack power source is described as a microfusion generator. That sounds amazing until you realize that even our largest fusion projects today are massive building-sized machines that still struggle to produce more energy than they consume. Shrinking that down to something the size of a backpack isn't just a leap. It's rewriting the rules of physics. Without a power source that dense, the entire system falls apart. No hydraulics, no sensors, no life support. Just a very heavy coffin. Then there's biology. A space marine isn't just a human in armor. He's the product of genetic engineering that's centuries beyond us. Marines undergo gene seed implantation, organ grafting, and surgical alteration to become strong enough to even move in their suits. The black carapace alone requires them to literally fuse their nervous systems to machinery. That's something modern biotechnology has no way to achieve. Even with CRISPR and advanced prosthetics, we can't seamlessly integrate electronics with nerves on that scale. For us, the armor would be useless. Cost is another killer. In universe, creating a single suit can take decades. They're handcrafted, maintained like relics, 
and passed down through generations. Modern militaries prioritize mass production and rapid deployment. Equipment that takes decades to make would bankrupt any real-world military and leave armies hopelessly outpaced. The logistics just don't make sense outside of Warhammer's gothic ritual-heavy universe. And finally, reliability. In the lore, power armor is incredibly reliable, capable of functioning for centuries with the right maintenance, but that's a product of narrative consistency. When judged across powers, reliability, cost, and plausibility, Space Marine armor is a contradiction. In the Warhammer setting, it's perfect. Powerful, reliable, and steeped in ritual. But in our world, it's impossible. The biology doesn't work, the power source doesn't exist, and the production model would collapse under modern economics. That's why, despite its iconic status, Space Marine power armor falls into B tier. It's awe-inspiring in its universe, but breaks completely under the lens of science. When you break down each design by powers, reliability, cost, and plausibility, the differences become crystal clear. Halo's Mjolnir armor and Tony Stark's Iron Man suit may dominate pop culture with their spectacle, but when judged by real-world science, both collapse under impossible energy demands, fragile biology, and budgets that no military could ever sustain. Warhammer's Space Marine power armor is legendary in its lore, but its reliance on gene seed biology, microfusion reactors, and centuries-long production cycles means it also joins them in the B tier. Stormtrooper armor, on the other hand, often mocked for its shortcomings, deserves more respect. It's practical, mass-producible, and actually grounded in technologies we already experiment with today. It may not be flashy, but that's exactly why it earns a solid spot in A tier. And finally, Fallout's power armor stands above the rest. Strip away the fantasy of its fusion cores, and what remains is a plausible industrial strength exosuit that could exist within decades. Its design philosophy is grounded in practicality, making it the closest bridge between science fiction and reality. That's why it claims the top spot in S tier. Which one would you step into during a firefight? Let us know in the comments, and don't forget to like and subscribe for more Nerd Science Deep Dives.